Welcome to How to Be a Woodworker, a newbie's guide to wood turning part one. I'm Larry for Dillon Woodworking. In part one of a newbie's guide to wood turning, we will discuss the types of wood lays and their parts, some of the brands that are on the market, what you need to get started turning, and some additional items you may want to purchase to make certain projects or at least make them a little easier. So let's get started. In my opinion, when you are starting to shop for a lathe or any tool and setting up a wood shop, you need to ask, what do you want to make? Something like pens and decorations or large table legs and baseball bats? You need to ask yourself, how much space do you have? Do you have a big garage space or small space in the basement like I do? How often do you plan on using the lathe? If not very often, then you probably want to be able to store away. What features do you want? Do you want variable speed? Can you reverse the directions? Do you want it on a stand? What do you want? And finally, the big question, how much do you want to spend? There are several projects that can be made on a smaller way, such as wooden and acrylic pens, wall clocks, cups and bowls. And many of the larger four size wood glaze can make many of the smaller items as well as sizable items like baseball bats, large bowls, and even pillars or columns. Let's look at the types of wood lays. The smaller desk or tabletop lays are called mini or mini lays. This all depends on the company you're dealing with. These are especially good for smaller objects like pens. Usually cost half the price of the full length lays, have a lower horsepower motor, have an optional bed extension to make longer items, have 20 inches or less between centers, have a 12 inch or smaller swing, and can sit on top of a bench. Full size lathes have a larger horsepower motor, larger swing, spin the object at faster speeds, are very heavy, expensive, and have a stand they sit on. Okay, okay, I may be sewing through terms out there that we don't quite understand yet. We should take a step back and look at some of the more important parts of the roadway. Here's a typical bench top or mini lathe. There are several parts we should look at in a little more detail. On the far left of the lathe, we have the headstock. This is where the belts inside it turn the spindle and the drive center. The center has a point in the middle and teeth towards the outside to grab into the wood. This is also removable to be able to push into the wood better. The hand wheel is used slowly to turn by hand, of course, the object being carved or sanded. In the middle of the lathe, we have the tool rest. This is called such because we rest our tools on it when we're doing our carving. The tool base is what the tool rest inserts into and slides left and right and back and forth, depending on the location of what we're carving. There are also two locks that fasten the tool rest and base into place, making sure they don't move while we're using the ways. In the back or the right side, we have the tailstock. This piece slides back and forth depending on the length of the object we are carving, and it also holds the live center which also has a point and spins, but is not controlled by a belt. The hand wheel can be cranked in or out, and this will give a more fine-tuned measurement and grip for the live center. The live center and tailstock are both secured into place by two different locks, just like there is for the headstock. When mentioning the distance between centers, I'm talking about the measurement between the center on the headstock and the live center on the tailstock. For the swing of the lathe, I'm referring to the space between the center on the headstock and the lathe bed, or in other words, the big iron piece that runs horizontal across the entire lathe. Now let's look at some of the many brands that you will see on the market. 
There are more than I am mentioning here, and I'm not trying to endorse one way or another. I want you to make your own informed decision based on your needs. The first of our ways is the Jet Mini Lathe. It is one of the most well-known brands. They can be pricey, can turn both forward and in reverse, have a variable speed that can be trolled with a knob, usually do not have a digital readout, is 15 and a half inches between centers, has a half-powered motor, and a 10-inch link. General International makes a lathe called the Maxi Lathe. It also has variable speeds, a 12-inch swing, over 17 inches between centers, a 3 quarter horsepower motor, weighs 146 pounds, has a digital speed display, and turns both forward and in reverse. This is also fairly pricey, just around $800. The Nova Comet 2 has a 12-inch swing, 16 and a half inch span between centers, a 3 quarter horsepower motor, has variable speeds, and turns both forward and in reverse. The Nova runs around $500. Shop Fox is another popular model that has variable speed control, a digital readout, a comparable swing and distance between centers. It also comes with a tool holder and a work light and runs around $520. The Turncraft Commander sold by Penn State Industries has many of the same features as other brands. However, it isn't as well as established or well known. It comes in a 10 or 12 inch swing, a tool rack, a work light, but also has a pen starter kit that includes the parts, epoxy, wax, blanks, an instructional video, as well as three chisels. The Turn Crafter runs around $330 and is also available for less if you don't want all the accessories. When I started in turning, I bought the, tur the 10 inch Turn Craft Commander and have been very satisfied ever since. I know other turners don't quite like it because it doesn't have a reversible spin. Another popular brand is from Grizzly Industries. It has many of the same features as the other brands to include a 12 inch swing and 18 inches between centers and it has an optional table and optional tools available. It runs around $375. Another very popular brand are the Delta Lays. They tend to have a higher horsepower motor, same amount of swing and distances between centers, and comes with and without a digital readout. Our last plan into the day is the Powermatic. They are a full-size lathe with a higher horsepower motor, higher distance between centers and swing, usually our variable speed, are very heavy and pretty spendy. They do have additional features, however, such as a movable and tilting headstock that allows you to move the switch to either side that you want it on. They also run over $4,000. All right, now that I have you overwhelmed with several assorted brands that you may be asking, so what else do I need to get started in turning? You will definitely need wood turning chisels there are five types to suggest you invest in. Wood turning chisels are different than a normal wood chisel. Here's what a wood turning chisel looks like. The first is a roughing couch. They come in different sizes. It is used for the initial cuts of turning square shapes into round shapes. They cut with the tips of the side walls called wings. The spindle gouge is the second gouge you will need. It is used to make beads and coves. They are called spindle gouges because they are perfect for making spindles and table legs. As you can see in the picture of the bead, they make them nice and round, either convex or concave. Parting tools are used to separate your project from the rest of the wood you're going to leave behind. Bowl gouge is ideal for making bowls or shaping the inside of objects such as cups or goblets. They are also used for making more delicate and precise cuts. The last tool is called a skew. It makes very fine, smooth cuts. It can be used for a shower, 
curve or bead and is often used to finish off a project. Another valuable tool is eye protection. They can be as simple as safety glasses. I personally use a full face protection mask. Hearing protection can be as simple as a set of disposable earplugs or as sophisticated as noise canceling headphones that play music while you're turning. Dust protection should be also considered. You are making fine shavings and dust will float throughout the air. You can get disposable or reusable masks. You will want to get sandpaper or micro mesh and several different grits. This will help finish off your projects, making them nice and smooth and finished to look like glass. You will also want to get a sender finder. They can be small for finding the middles of pen blanks or as large as turning big logs. A true center of your project helps make for an easier, more evenly turning project. There are also many different types of things that you may wish to purchase or create depending on the specific project you want to create. For making smaller projects such as pens and shaving tools, you will want different types of woods referred to as blanks, a kit to put together, a mandrel to hold everything together between the centers, a drill to make a hole through the middle of the blank, finish to give it that nice looking sheen, a press to put them together, a bushing that guides you on how small or large you want your project. When making bowls, you will need a good sized piece of wood, a chuck to hold the wood to the lathe, finish for the shine, and calipers to measure the inside and the outside of the bowl. Another project that I'm now getting into is turning wooden toys. You will first need to have an idea, some wood, and finish. These are just some of the many projects that can be done. Let your imagination run wild. Stay tuned to Dylan Woodworking for part two of our wood turning series, where I will demonstrate some of the techniques that I use to make some really exciting projects. Please subscribe for future videos from Dylan Woodworking, give me a thumbs up, and continue watching. Please let me know your thoughts about wood turning in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Larry, and keep the wood a turning.